Hello, I'm Reverend Greg Gregory, pastor of Spring Hill Presbyterian Church, coming to you to speak about Easter, Easter Sunday, the day when we may not gather because we choose to save by staying apart, the day we choose <coughs> To celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together by electronic means not by physical proximity closeness yet we do proclaim with joy and confidence particularly in the midst of this coronavirus Christ is raised he is Lord indeed and he will see us through Christ our God will see us through let us pray dear God in heaven on this day of triumph this day of joy this day of wonder this day of surpassing goodness we turn to you with hearts that are touched by the pain and suffering that is all about us, by the heroism of those who rush into that pain and that suffering, risking their exposure to it and experiencing on the part of many their exposure to it. Yet, O oh Lord, we come to you this day to worship you and to give praise to you and to express our trust in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, this day, whenever you be listening, I would like to talk about when Christianity started. And uh, we might have a number of answers to that question. We might say that Christianity started the day Christ was born. Christ was born in Bethlehem. We certainly celebrate the coming of our Messiah Lord on that day. But Christianity, in my view, did not start then. We might say that Christianity started when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and then went out into the wilderness for 45, 40 days and then came into the in from the wilderness proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe. And because many repented and believed, at least for a, 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 some time, we might say that's when Christianity started. Or we might say that Christianity started the day that Peter answered Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? You are the Lord, the Christ, the Son of God, he said. And Jesus commended him for saying that. Well, so we might say that the Christianity started when Peter gave his bold confession. But let us remember that Jesus immediately after Peter's confession began to speak about his suffering and his death on the cross and that he would be raised that he would rise again in three days and Peter said no that's not going to happen that's not the way my Messiah is going to 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 rule and Jesus condemned him and said get behind me Satan that's not the way I, Jesus Christ, am going to be Messiah. Follow me. Come with me. Trust me. Do as I say. So it could not be Peter's confession of faith that began, that started Christianity. And I want to tell you when 
when, when I believe that Christianity began. And I want to read you the scripture that talks about when Christianity began, when it started. It is from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter, reading verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And that's when Christianity started. When the two women came from the, from the, from the, from the, the city, To hope that perhaps they could add more uh, anointing to the body of Jesus. Wondering who might roll the tomb away, the stone away from the tomb. They came only to express the same kindness, and consideration, and concern that we still commu com communicate to those of us who have died. We respect and we remember them with gratitude and with sorrow. And so with gratitude and sorrow, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of Jesus most likely, went to the tomb to do that last loving deed in their behalf. And if they were carrying any idea that Jesus would be raised, the fact that they were carrying materials to anoint him makes that likelihood very unlikely. No, they went defeated and sorrowing. They went wondering what they would do next, now that Jesus, whom they had so hoped would be so much, had died a horrible death. But they went. And as they were going, the tomb stone was exploded away rolled away with a flashing light and the guards became as dead men. Answer who would roll the tomb away was evident. And the angel of the Lord greeted them and said, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, but he is not here for he has been raised. Now you go and you tell his, his, his disciples 
to go to Galilee, for there you will find him. There they will regroup. And indeed, as we get to the end of chapter 28, we indeed see that uh, Jesus and the disciples have gathered together, just as the women had were told to tell them, the disciples to, to go and do. And I want to suggest very simply, very quietly, that Christianity started in the moment when the two Marys saw Jesus Christ alive again. And without thought, without hesitation, without anything but the power of the resurrected Christ working in their hearts and their souls and their bodies, they fell to the ground. They took his feet and they worshipped him. And when they worshipped him, they fell flat on their faces. We talk about getting on our knees to pray. Some of us do, some of us don't. But when religious persons of Jesus' time and long before prayed, they got on their bellies, they got face down on the dirt, and they grabbed hold of Jesus' feet, face down on their, in the dirt, and they worshipped him, and they worshipped him in such a way that the only word that is suiting, suitable to describe what they did from the Hebrew by, was Vayish Tachai. Vayish Vatish Tachai. Vatish Tachai. That means nothing to you, and nor should it. But it means a great deal to me and let me tell you why. In in Hebrew, there are thing. There is a there is a a, 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 a measurement of words. Uh, it, it, it you might think of it as a platform. A particular word is operating on this platform, not that platform. This word. This complicated word was operating on a platform. And this verb operated only on that platform. Nowhere else. None of the other platforms that were available for verbs to be seen. Moreover, this verb is the only verb in the Hebrew language that appears in this platform. So you have a verb that appears only on this platform and a platform which has only this verb. Now, what I'm trying to communicate to you is the singularity, the uniqueness of the event that, the, that Matthew describes. They fell on the ground and they worshipped him. And then, he, then they got up. And Jesus said to them, go, tell my disciples 
that I have risen and that I am going to Galilee and there they should meet me. And the women went astonished in wonder and filled with joy. And they told the disciples, he is raised. He is raised from the dead. What he said was going to happen that we barely, if at all, understood has come to pass, just as he said it would. And now he tells us, tells me, tells us to tell you to go to Galilee, for there you will see him. That's when Christianity started. When the women fell on their faces, held the feet of Jesus, and worshipped him, and then he told them to go and tell the disciples to go to Galilee where they would meet Jesus. That's the Christianity that you and I are practicing as I speak and you listen, even though that's two different moments. It's the Christianity of Believing, and worshiping, and trusting Jesus. And then go, going and telling and doing as he tells us to do. How important that is, that simple truth is in the midst of the multiplying numbers of the corona, coronavirus epidemic, pandemic. My hope is built is now nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. One might say on Jesus' blood and resurrection. For he is the first fruits from the dead. He, rising from the dead, has made for us, made death for us relative. It's not the end. It's not the terminator. It's the passage. And until we pass, he calls us to live. Live until we die. And then when we die, to be raised from the dead as he was. And go and tell what you have heard, what you have seen. And may you be an instrument of Christ's peace and power and love and happiness and joy on this Easter Sunday and every day thereafter. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus. You would understand, you do understand this time that we are going through. You do know the pain and the misery that so many are suffering. You do know the anguish and the trepidation with which we move about. Now with masks on our faces and gloves on our hands. Both to protect ourselves, but more, more importantly, to protect others from ourselves if we happen to have the virus unknowingly. So help us, O oh Lord, to go in the midst of these trying times and tell of the love of Jesus for us. Tell of the mission of Jesus to go and tell others that the life that we have in him takes us to the platform of worship and we worship him O oh God through his holy name Amen May you go forth this day 
filled with the confidence of the resurrected Jesus that he has given you. And may you go and tell what you have heard and seen in the midst of a world that needs your voice, needs your Christian voice. When Mary's, the Mary, two Marys fell on their faces, they started Christianity. Now go forth and continue Christianity in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.